hello so let's start at today's class so what is the today's session classes and objects okay so so far we have seen functions we have seen modules the other stuffs in python so classes uh, it's it's nothing different to java okay it's it's derived from the same the concept is derived from the same java everything is treated as an object right so sim so here we are uh, i mean uh, python has also extended its support to object oriented programming okay so to achieve that we need classes and objects to access classes right so i know uh, just uh, leave you know whatever if you don't know anything about java it's fine just just listen a fresh it's not so complex not the so easy topic okay so let's see so so it says that it has been object oriented and, and for that we are using classes and objects okay creating classes okay so the class statement creates a new class definition the name of a class immediately follows the keyword class followed by a colon as follows okay so what is a class actually okay a class is nothing but it is a collection of uh, it is collection of some data or some uh, you know probably let's say you have few definitions probably a few functions i am i am in definitions means few functions you have three or four functions you have few variables and, and uh, you have you have some loops inside them so you see that all of them needs to be placed together inside one thing it need not it should not be mixed with the entire program but it should be kept a bit separate okay so if you write a loop yes they'll all be together inside a loop but the the loop criteria should be met okay so and you can't access and you can't access a separate function inside a inside a loop you know calling it separately but you have to you have to traverse the loop you have to go through every each and every definition and then only find it right so but when you say a class okay so it is nothing but it is just like a Uh, a, a box okay which is enclosing everything and if you want one function inside it you can see in this class i want to access this function okay so what is collection it's a place where some data is stored okay so now let's see how we we'll use it how we we'll create it okay so now class as a function is created with the de with the keyword definition def space function name so similarly here we are using class space the name followed by a colon okay so here whatever you want to write optional class documentation string you can write what this class is all about and then class suit whatever you want to write inside it you'll write it okay the class has a documentation string which can be accessed via class name dot dot, uh, dot underscore doc underscore okay dot it's a documentation string which can be used class suit consists of all the components or statements or definitions which are used to define this class okay let's see that term sentence it's a class what is the what is the class name class xyz class employee okay so now what is the documentation string what is it just, just nothing but it's just whenever i open this class or something it is just i don't have any knowledge on it but there is someone let's say sampad has written this uh, program and kept it aside and now hari or someone has come and you know they thought hey let me see this program what is it all about because i have some issue to be fixed in this program so i write a class employee he says yeah there is a class employee so what is it doing so let me read all the functionality of the class then i'll understand rather than that it says it's a common base class for all the employees so it gives it gives some some understanding okay it's a common base class for all the employees okay 
So now on this they are doing so and so operations. Okay. So it gives you some understanding. It's just what it's just a comment. Okay. So common base class for all employees. And employee count is equals to zero. I said leave this aside. Okay. Now define in it. Leave that also aside. I'll tell you. Leave employee count and leave uh, in it. Now I'll tell you. So inside it you have a function. Define display count or it should be written with self. Okay, I'll tell you why. Okay. And I asked it to print something. Employee. I have I've asked it to print employee. Okay. So now coming back. I said define in it. Okay. So what is in it? Okay. So it is nothing but it is in it is initializing this class. Okay. So whereas we have a concept called as a constructor and a destructor. Okay. Uh, I don't have it here, but still let me explain. So what is a constructor? What is a destructor? A constructor is used to initialize a program, initialize a class. Okay. Initialize a class. A destructor is used to is used to you know clear or delete that uh, class okay so whenever whenever a class is initialized some amount of memory is created for that object and for those definitions some amount of memory is created for it okay to for its functionality not for storing okay for its functionality when you go ahead with a destructor it clears all that memory okay so that is what a, a constructor and a destructor does, right? So now you come here, we have init, okay? It's a constructor class, okay? So it's a similar to a constructor class. It initializes a, a class employee, okay? And it says self, comma, what are the, what are the uh, variables, uh, you know, you will be using in the entire class, okay? Self, name, salary, self, okay? So, in init of self is actually work acting as a constructor. Init of self is actually acting as a constructor, okay? That's the reason why you use self everywhere, okay? So, uh, and not only that, at least one parameter should be passed to a function inside a, inside a class, okay? So, when there is no function, when there is no parameter to pass, we use self in place of that. Okay, so using self all the time is a better, uh, what do you say, better option. Okay, better practice. So now I'm accessing it with this self dot name because here it's an initializer, right? Self dot name is equals to name. Self dot salary is equals to salary, and because these two are, these two variables scope is specific here, okay? But when I, I said employee count, I said employee dot employee count. Why? Because this employee count is a global variable which is defined outside a function just under the main class. So its functionality is, is, is uh, global to this, to this class, it's global, right? So here I'm directly accessing it with the class name employee dot emp count is equals to plus what or something whatever okay so there is some explanation let's see and go back the variable employee count is a class variable whose value be shared among all instances of a class this can be accessed as employee dot count from inside the class or outside the class right the first init method is a special method which is called as a constructor or initialization method that Python calls when you create a new instance of this class. Okay. You declare the other classes methods like normal functions with the exception that the first argument to each method is a self. Python adds the self argument to the list for you. You don't need to include it when you call the method. Okay. Yeah, when you call a method, you need not pass self from there. But it Python automatically adds it for you. Okay, so uh, again a quick, quick look back at our class, whatever we have seen. Yeah. 
So this is our class. Class employee has EMP count. It's a global variable which can be accessed inside or outside of a class, right? So that's the reason why I'm accessing it with the class name. Rest, it's a rest. I'm accessing it with self. Okay. See, when I'm trying to print employee count, I said employee dot employee count. When I try to print salary, I said self dot salary. Okay. We'll run it before we do that. We are supposed to create an object. Okay. Create an instance or an object. Okay. Create an instance of this class or an object. What is it and why do we need it? Okay. So to access this class. Okay. We are going to create a object to this class. Okay. So, if we are not going to create an object to this class, how will this class be called? Okay. So, to access this class, we need an object object for it. Okay. So, how is how are we going to create? Okay. To create instance of a class, you'll call using class name and pass in whatever arguments in it method accepts. Okay. Whatever whatever arguments only the init method accepts okay it's not the other methods okay we said emp1 that's an object emp1 how are you going to create it emp1 or the object is equals to whatever class name okay followed by the arguments which you're supposed to pass okay Let's come back to the copy of it. Okay, there is some class employee. Okay. There is some problem with the indentation. But let's go up and adjust it. One, two, three, two. Fine. Right. All the all the functions should be defined in the same indentation. Okay. Good. There is same indentation. Hmm. Now said whatever is equals to this is my object or we'll call it obj1 obj1 object1 is equals to employee my class name whatever of what all arguments I have in uh, you know in it self need not be added if you add also it is of no harm but but Python itself adds self. Okay. So name. Mm. 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 Salary. Okay, to specify it within double quotes, right? Okay. 
how you make them. Okay. So far, no errors. Good. So you have created an instance for it. Okay. So when you have when you have created a class and when you have created an instance object, if at all there are any errors, try to resolve them. Okay. First, just try to save the program and compile it. Any errors, if it's for you, just try to resolve it. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and access the and actually access the attributes. Okay. So, how are we actually going to access the attributes or something uh, inside a class? Simple. There is a class. There is an object. Okay. So, a class is having few functions its definite i mean definitions variables some logic whatever all this a class is having coming to object what is an object having okay let's see what is an object having? An object is a reference to access class. Okay. It has parameters specified in class. Or in short, it has real data, right? It has the real data, right? So now, usually in a function, whenever, okay, whenever you create you create a function and use the same function and give the arguments, it would it should execute and give us an output. But it is not the scenario when you come to classes. You have a class, you have a logic setting there. You have an object. To this object you are assigning some some values okay saying that hey this name Ali and he has a salary of 5000 okay so now to actually execute it okay you have you need to access the attributes so how are you going to access the attributes so it is with Object name dot class name okay okay dot or class or uh, you know, object name dot object name dot function name actually object name dot function name okay so that will allow us to access the attributes okay so I'm not calling a class now but I'm but I am accessing this class with an with the object created to it. So when I say employee one, it is referring to class employee. So inside employee, I am speaking about a class display employee. Okay. So it displays the details of employee. Okay.
Genau. Tier 1. Dort. Dort. Display. Count. Okay. So now it is accessed, right? So earlier it didn't give us any output, but it was just checking the syntactical stuff. Okay. So now it is given as an output. When I said OBJ employee OBJ dot uh, employee uh, salary and employee uh, name, it has printed both of them, right? Okay. When I asked for employee details, it has printed name and salary. When I asked for display count, it has displayed the total employee as equals to employee dot employee count. Okay, it has increased it. And printed it fine so now an object has only one reference okay so a class can have multiple objects n number of objects okay a single class can have multiple number of objects okay let me create an object too So it is gone and accessed second one, second, uh, second object even. Okay. So how are you going to write a class? Nothing. All the definitions, function definitions, what you want to write, it is not again, again, uh, there is oh, one step. So I, it's not that I have to access everything. I need not actually access all the functions which are specified. It is my wish with this object, what is the function I want to access, okay? So, usually after writing a class, okay, what is a class? A class is defined with a keyword class, okay, followed by the class name and it can have a set of functions inside it, okay? So, to access this class, we need to create an object or a reference, okay? A reference to it, okay? So, how is a reference created to that class? An object. An object, whenever you call this object, it will, it will actually go and refer this class, okay? So, along with the object, you would be passing the parameters, whatever is defined in the init class, okay? So, init is nothing but a constructor or a initializer, initializer okay? So after that, to access this class, now again, you have to access this class with an object, object dot, whatever functionality you want to access inside the class could be just called, okay? You need not pass any parameters over here. It will be taken care by the, taken care by the, uh, taken care in the uh, object creation section, okay? So this is about a simple class okay let's go ahead you can add or remove mod modify attributes of a class and objects at any time even during runtime you can do that okay so I can write 
I can add and I can you know uh, modify it during the runtime even okay so probably we don't have age somewhere so I can just go ahead age is nowhere defined I can just go ahead and add this parameters Uh, may I know who has joined? Hello? to different and there's a string okay fine so just need at the age even okay So, instead of using normal statements to access attributes, you can use following functions as well, okay? Get attribute, okay, to access the attributes of an object. Has attribute to check if an attribute exists or not. Set attributes to set an attribute. If the attribute does not exist, okay? Then it would be created. It's something like a VI command, okay? So, if it's not existing, it will create one. If it exists, it's goes, it goes ahead and defines it, okay? So, delete of delete attribute to delete an object okay attribute okay object comma name so i have i want to set an attribute has i have i want to check now i want to check from the object if i have an attribute age okay so this returns true if it exists or else it returns me false right There still okay. Or else it returns false. Okay. So uh, get attribute. Okay. So it gets the data whatever we have. Okay. So rather than accessing it with uh, something like uh, yeah, I mean object one dot something or object one dot uh, you know uh, with class name or something, you can just directly use it. You uh, using get set and uh, I mean, uh, what do you say? Has attribute uh, functions, okay? Uh, 
Pandana? Yeah, tell me. Uh, even if we don't define the functions there, can we use the set attribute and uh, uh, as I mean set attribute to assign uh, object? It is not. It is not a function. It is not about function. It is about the accessing the uh, values. So attributes are used to actually access access the values in, with the object. Okay. So here age is not a function. It is just a object. It is just a parameter actually, right? So age, we are trying to actually check whether age is there, age is added or to add age, to delete age, right? So this is nothing but whatever we did here, okay? Remove uh, or modify attributes. Instead of doing it this way, you can do it this way. That's the only difference. It is nothing about classes. Okay. Okay. So yeah. without uh, defining this, uh, you know, probably a function, we can't... Uh, actually try to use it over here okay it should be defined inside it after which only it can be accessed using an object okay okay Chitwan has a name. Chitwan falls.
Yeah. Right. Oh. I'll tell you. So first we we have this class, right? So we have an attribute. We have a way uh, attribute name. Sorry, attribute name inside it, right? So name is already defined, right? So age is not defined. I have defined. I have defined age for this object over here. Okay, from here I have defined it. Okay. So now I'm coming to end of the class and I'm saying just check whether has attribute. Okay, it has attribute with which object? Object one. What is the value? I have what is the actual attribute which I have to check? Name. Okay, and I'm saying I'm asking you to check if it has age. Okay. So I'm just trying to take the values in two objects and trying to print it. Okay. So just to see whether it is returning true or false. So it actually, if it is, if I say object one and age, as it is not, if it is not specified here, it should, it will say false. Okay, as it is specified, both when we run, it will show true because name is also there and this is as well there. So now we'll just simply change the object name and just check about the age. So I didn't create any object, any attribute age for any attribute age for the specific class, right? So that's the reason why is set false because I haven't tried to add any attribute over here. So now, before this, if I try to set an attribute for it, it would work, right? So let's add it this way set attribute of obj2 comma age comma what is the value 9 okay so now when i call for object to age it should return true Yes, it is returned true because it is setting a variable there. Okay. So now we'll do one more simple thing. We'll delete the object. Okay. And then try to access it once again. After printing it. After printing it. Delete attribute of obj1 will will delete okay not two comma what attribute I want to delete to delete age whatever I have just said now okay and <coughs> Now check. I'll get for object one, right? Let's check it for object one. Print M. Both are different. Print don't work. This printed false, right? Because it has we have deleted the attribute age and then we have tried to check whether it is present or not, which which confirms that it has deleted that attribute. Okay. So simple usage. Has attribute, set attribute, get attribute, and delete attribute. So now there are few built-in classes, class attributes. Every Python class keeps following built-in attributes as they can be accessed using dot operator like any other attribute. Dict, okay, doc, dictionary containing the class name space, doc class documentation string or no, none if defined, okay. Name the class name, module the module name, main and this is the interactive mode. Basis, a simple, uh, possibly empty tuple, okay containing base classes in order in order of their occurrences in the base class list. Okay. So say so about some objects. Okay. Just leave it aside. All of 
configure this program. Sorry. This will copy it together in one place and then see. VI yeah, class 2.5. Good. Gentle employee, okay, and the voice click on result, the output on. Hmm. Okay, so this is our class which we have seen earlier, okay, uh, the display count class and the display employee class employee function inside a class employee so outside of the class I said print employee with the class with the class I didn't create an object to it dot underscore doc employee dot underscore name underscore module underscore basis underscore dict let's see what each is printing it said I said it very clearly it can be accessed outside a class so that's the reason we are not even creating an attribute to it, but we are just actually referencing it with the class name. That's it. Okay. So, what is the employee doc? Okay. What is what is the line which we have written? Common base class for all employees. That is the that is the name. That is the line which we have given in the base section. Okay. And just edit it and see whether. The new one is reflecting here or not, okay? What is the class name? It is employee, okay? What is the uh, employee module? It is nothing but the main module. It is not there, okay? Employee basis, it is empty. Nothing is there, okay? It is nothing. Employee basis, nothing but an empty tuple, okay? So, employee dict, okay? What is there inside it? Module main, display count, function display, okay? With some, with some difference. Employee count, okay, and display, it's, it's an again attribute, okay, and display employee function, okay, and <coughs> doc, and an init function. So, these are all the stuff which you have inside this, inside this class, okay. So, this is about... <clears throat> this is about the built-in attributes okay so so uh, see garbage collection as well so python destroying objects python deletes unneeded objects or built-in types or class types okay automatically to free memory space the process by which python periodically re re reclaims block of memory that no longer are used is termed as garbage collection okay so with the we don't need to use a constructor actually it automatically deallocates uh, deallocates the memory which is which is allocated for this class and objects and attributes okay so once it is done okay once the execution is done okay so uh, automatically freeing of memory uh, i mean uh, uh, what is it claiming back the memory reclaiming or getting back the memory so when we have a phone when we clear our uh, ram actually what happens it says that so and so mb of ram has been cleared or the catchy has been cleared and so and so ram has come okay so it is actually doing nothing but a garbage collection where it once all the processes are cleared whatever ram which is or you know whatever memory which is allocated for other processes whenever it gets free it reclaims it and adds it to the free space right so that uh, that is called as a garbage collection okay so garbage collection runs during program execution and is triggered when an object reference count reaches zero okay when its reference count reaches zero 
in objects reference count changes as the number of aliases that the point to its change okay so it says that whenever an object reference has reached the end okay or it reaches zero it automatically freeze okay or whenever the object you know object is called five times and when the object is called the last time or the fifth time okay after it has been called it is nowhere called again immediately it frees the memory which is allocated to that object okay that is what it is speaking about okay <clears throat> we have class inheritance method overloading okay so two topics so what is inheritance okay so inheritance is nothing but you have a class already you have some attributes you have some values inside that class and you want to use those attributes or values inside another class if you have a function if you have some data inside a function and you want to use this function inside something else you you are creating a module and putting it under that and you are just directly importing a module but what if you want to import not only the functionality but even the attributes which are there in one class to the from one class to the other class how are you going to do okay you are going to inherit the class inherit the class to the below class okay the class from which the parameters are inherited is called as the parent class and the class which is inheriting inheriting properties is called as a child class okay child class or a sub class okay so class sub class name or whatever the child class name within parameters you have to specify what is the parent class from which it has to inherit okay so class parent okay so i said some attribute 100 i just said uh, you know defined in it inside uh, i mean define some init function and some some methods inside it okay leave it aside and i defined a child class class child of parent okay and i am calling all the functions whichever are defined inside this inside this parent class inside this parent class i have a parent method i have set attributes i have get attributes but here i just have only child method i don't have anything but with the object which i have created for for, for uh, method sorry for, for class child i'm trying to access child method yes it should be accessible but i'm even accessing the parent method set attribute and get attributes which are not defined in the child child class but are defined inside the parent class okay but still with the reference object of child i am able to access all of them how because i'm saying that i'm import i'm inheriting the properties of the parent class to this child class which means that this child class has now proper privileges to access whatever data is present inside the spare and class okay so let's write this small program and try to end it up four so that is the parent class okay a file can have any number of classes inside it right so differentiate it so now you have a user bin slash python you have class okay so inside this class you have some attribute 100 parent attribute is 100 and you have an init method for it which is calling parent constructor and a parent method it's set attributes and get attributes okay 
So now we have a child class which is importing the parent class and I said define init of self. It is nothing but child class constructor and there is a child method. So now I'm trying to access this here I'm trying to I'm trying to create an object for this child class okay so child class is not having any and it is not having any parameter so I'm not passing any parameter I left it blank okay so with the same object I'm trying to call all the methods which are defined both in child and parent class and let's see how it works so here it is said calling child constructor, yes it should. And it said calling child method, it should. Then it's saying it is calling the parent method and it is printing a parent attribute. Okay. So child method it has gone to child method. It said calling child method. Okay. So before calling child method, it goes to the init initiator and then goes to the child method, right? So that's the reason it has called this constructor and then went and called this child method okay so after that it went and called the parent method so it called the parent constructor and the parent method okay so after that it has set an attribute of 200 okay so it has set an attribute of 200 to what to the, to the uh, function in the parent class and we are again printing the attribute whatever we have set okay so that's the reason why it is displaying all that okay Okay, I'm sorry. It class it calls only the child constructor. It doesn't call the parent constructor. It uses the same one. So now we'll do a small thing. I defined a normal child class. First two things should be proper, and from third one it should give us an error, right? So it is called child constructor, it is, call, it is called child method, okay. So after that, okay, I asked it to go and print c.parent method, okay. It says file class 4.py calls attribute error. Child instance has no attribute parent method. It has no attribute parent method. Yes, it's true. It doesn't have any attribute parent method inside it. But when I write parent within the class after I declare a class, I try to inherit the properties of parent class. Now I'll be able to access this, right? So now, class parent, P is a capital one, sorry. So now I'm able to access it, access this because I'm trying to inherit the properties of one class to another class. It again makes sure that you're not rewriting the code whichever is not, whichever is unnecessary, okay? We're just trying to import that code. So this is one more concept, overriding, okay? So from your child class, you can always override your parent class methods, okay? One reason for overriding parent method is because you may want special or different functionality in your subclasses. So you have imported your uh, imported functionality of your parent class okay, into your program. But you don't want to use it as it is. But you want to make sure that you have to edit or you have to write some changes to that, to that imported functionality. Okay. You can always go ahead and do it. It is called as overriding. Okay. Overriding the attributes or the functionality of your parent class from your child class okay so here class parent define my method self print calling parent method it said print calling child method c is equals c is equals to child okay so now there is a uh, there is a method my method and parent and there is a my method and child okay so now child class will be override will override the functionality of the parent method okay
said calling child method and then say that it is going to call my method of parent it is calling the my method of child only okay so it is overriding the functionality of the parent method with the child method okay uh, probably I'll give you some examples uh, and few questions to solve as well tomorrow for classes and overriding and inheritance so probably you'll get a proper hands-on with, ex with you know, uh, proper knowledge with hands-on only so I'll give you a few sample programs and some data in next class because uh, on weekend you can just practice it okay so this completes okay uh, Python programming so uh, tomorrow we'll start off with some fresh fresh tool okay so uh, I'll, I'll see which one could be taught so we'll start off with a fresh tool tomorrow okay any doubts so far okay then shallow thank you thanks for joining bye bye thank you thank you